the final round of the Real Truck Club Challenge from Attica, Indiana. Last week, we brought you the brutality of the rock crawl. This week, our coverage continues with the carnage of the buzzard's roost. Seems like such a pretty little place. So why do they call it the Buzzard's Roost? Here we are now in the Buzzard's Roost itself. This is a, a really uh, dramatic rocky outcropping. It's uh, really some of the most severe terrain that you would find, I think, anywhere in the country. Mm -hmm. uh, slippery soils, as you can see. Hard to walk on. Hard to walk, even that. Um, very, very steep, uh, rocky terrain. Um, and we've got a course set up here that uh, I think will challenge uh, any kind of four-wheel okay. drive. Well, certainly, you know, yeah. after yesterday, they're asking a lot of these guys. I mean, just to get them out here and have them keep going and do this. I saw guys welding last night at midnight. They were still working, still putting stuff together. We had a lot of carnage yesterday. Yeah, well, <laughs> I, I think that they're, they're, they seem to be up to it and, and, and up for it. Uh, but there is a reason why we do this in day two, because this really is going to be the hardest thing that they're going to have to face. Well, I, you know, I watched these guys last night. I'm tired. I'm hot. I'm sweaty. I'm not feeling too good. These guys got to, you know, got to be running on only adrenaline. Yeah, well, they're, that's why they're, you know, the top guys in the clubs. And, um, that's why we wanted him here. First up to try and beat the buzzard is Barry McCulloch. I'm Bob Bauer with Tony Becker, and let the games begin. This is an 84 CJ7, and whoa, looks like he had a little brain fade. This rig is well set up for the course. He should do fine. There's a lot of tight turns and this big drop-off. In the climbing world, we call it the crux of the climb. This will be a defining aspect of this event. All right, Barry battles the buzzard with a four minute and 50 second run. Well, we, I can't say enough about this high school team that I've got. They, they, they worked all night getting this drive shaft put back together, re-welded and uh, and they, they, without them, I mean, we that, just wouldn't have been here. They just worked really hard to get her done. So Tim's off. As you can hear, those guys had a long night. Remember, there's no big dollar sponsors helping these guys out. If it breaks, they fix it. In this situation, I think Tim kind of underestimated his vehicle. He could have gone forward. He uses his winch and lowers himself down backward, which is costing him a lot of time. Well, time got him there. It's a DNF. <laughs> oh, and he sure sounds tickled. The buzzard's about to welcome Alan Schneider in a Mazda Navajo. I don't 
don't know what's more surprising, the way this vehicle is holding up or the way he's driving. Oh! Allen's in with a three minute and 48 second run. Welcome back. We're with Ed Van Vickle and his 87 Wrangler as he takes on the buzzer. There's very little hesitation and a lot of control. comes up with a run of four minutes flat. Chris Anderson in that 79 CJ7. Yeah, this is a strong little Jeep. It sounds like he's having some carburetor issues. You know, now with all the fuel injections that are on the market, this is becoming less and less common. a little off course. He goes left when he should have gone right. He straightens it out and ends up with a time of 8 minutes and 16 seconds. Butch Williams in his tidy looking Bronco. Good control. This drop off is where some guys are losing a lot of time. You see, it's really tough for them to get off of that rock in a right turn and make it before they hit that tree. Butch brings it in at 4.51. On the gas is Russ Fickleman. You know, Tony, Josh Stewart was right. It seems that the more vehicles that go down this big rock ledge, the slicker it gets. Well, the good news is, it's gonna get worse. Russ escapes the buzzard's roost in 503. We fixed the steering box for a guy. We fixed uh, going up, we we're gonna go wash this to try and do a few things on this, but going up there we found another guy with a tractor, so we helped him fix that. Came back, welded it, took some stuff up, put some stuff on. We were just helping everybody out last night, trying to get everybody running. What do you have to do on this? Uh, we ended up washing it and then we ended up going to sleep. <laughs> really? You had no problems 
instead of getting rest, you went and hung out with these other guys. Yeah, we're trying, trying to make everybody work, uh, trying to be helpful as much as possible. We're, we're not, probably not going to win anyway, but we're going to have fun no matter what. Yeah. I mean, shoot, we already are here. That is excellent. <laughs> Well, Jeff is off. And isn't that what this event is really all about? Teamwork, camaraderie, and fun. This little tracker combined with his driving is very impressive. I'll tell you, being a short wheelbase doesn't seem to hurt it a bit. Jess lost a ton of time with that last turn and has to settle for a six and a half minute run. We broke a rear axle shaft on the rock and roll, so we're three wheeling. This is Brian Cooper in a 91 tracker. And did I hear him right? He's got a broken axle and he's going to try and beat the buzzard in three wheel drive? Yeah, we can expect this guy to be on the pipes. Wow, fortunately for Brian, it was the driver's side rear that went away because he is using every bit of that one good axle. Well, Brian gets a six and a half minute run. Not bad for a three-legged Geo. We yeah. hadn't already finished anything yet. We always roll over or get stuck. Or... He gets to wait for the big finish yeah. here, the big finale. Your opus, as That's they right. say. That's right. Brad Kellogg up. It's going to be a big pink scout against a big buzzard's roost. This is a big truck and a little turn. Watch out, guys. Brad in 516 and a long jump. Well, we're hearing some unusual noises from under your truck. What do you think you caught there at the end? Air? Yeah. <laughs> this is Rodney Free in his Bronco. You see the strap off the back? He's had this rig on its nose a few times this weekend, and I get the idea he doesn't want to push his luck. His co-driver is hanging off the other end trying to keep the tail down. Well, let me go off that rock. No, stop that. Okay. 
Rodney comes to the finish line with his co-driver in hot pursuit. Now for the Skyjacker Shock of the Day. Sometimes the best way up a trail isn't always the most conventional. But I think you'll agree with us when we say you should at least have some air in your tires. Ready, man. Okay, wait, now let's, let's explain this. <laughs> you were already entered. Yes, sir. And you came down. As his co-driver. And then you ended up being ultimate. Yeah. Now you guys have more fun this weekend than anyone I've seen. Oh, we are having the most fun anybody could possibly have. <laughs> We're scrambling like mad trying to fix rigs in between events. But son of a gun, I mean, you can't beat this. This is the best. This is a chance of a lifetime. With that said, Jason Pugh and Eric Egan are off to Samurai the Roost. Yeah, they are attacking the course. Look at this run! Cut a fast time, which sets the benchmark, and it's going to be really tough to beat. Dana Woodruff up in her CJ7. She's got a tough act to follow. been really tough in this event, showing that as a driver, she's certainly no slouch. The Southern High Rollers out of Texas got someone here to be very proud of. No hesitation and complete control. Oh, Dana beats Jason's time, and that puts her in first place. Wow, Tony, this thing is changing faster than the weather in an Indiana summer. These are the last runs for the entire weekend, and no one's holding anything back. Doug Nesselhoff has been consistently at the top of the rankings. Tony, Doug is in constant motion. This run is super solid. And it sure is, 327, a new leader. Yeah. Wow, we're still first? Yeah! It's all set. All right. Yeah! Hold it, this thing isn't over yet. Eric Egan and that Bronco have been wicked quick. But can it beat 327? He has been flogging this horse all weekend and he is not letting up now. He 
He's driving the wheels off this thing. Literally. Oh, it just went away a little too soon. That's heartbreaking. Oh, man. What a, this is exactly what we wanted to do this weekend. We wanted to come here, thrash on some trucks, have a lot of fun. Take home some broken parts to play with. Look at all these trophies I've got. Oh, no kidding. Wow, they certainly did thrash on that Bronco, and Dana ends up right at the top of the heap. But it's Doug Nesselhoff who takes the buzzard's roost. So who takes it all and the bragging rights to the Real Truck Club Challenge? Our overall winner of the third annual Real Truck Club Challenge from Firewalker 4x4's Ed Van Vickle. This is better than the check. <laughs> but he'll take the check too. <laughs> For minor repairs. <laughs> For a complete look at the Real Truck Club Challenge on DVD, log on to fourwheeler.com. For Tony Becker and all the crew, I'm Bob Bauer. We'll see you next week flinging bugs from the Sierras.